Hey what's going on guys, my name is Projo and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up and start recording gameplay using Nvidia's Shadowplay. So unfortunately this will only apply to people who have an Nvidia GPU from the last few years and it does cut out all AMD users. I will say that that Shadowplay isn't the only free tool out there, so don't think that you have to get an Nvidia card to record. There's lots of other good alternatives with great functionality such as OBS, MSI Predator or AMD Raptor. So with that out of the way, let's get straight into it. So to start off, you want to head over to www.geforce.com and start by clicking on GeForce Experience. You want to make sure that your GPU is compatible with Shadowplay, so head over to the system requirements and check that you've got everything. In general, anything from a 750 onwards should be fine, and I guess some 600 models will be alright as well. If you want to, you can check whether your game is supported for Shadowplay, but I'll go into that more in a second. Now once you've gone and downloaded GeForce Experience, just follow the instructions throughout and install the program. After that, restart your PC, and I'll see you in a second. So you should see five main tabs labelled as Games, Drives, My Rig, Shield, and Preferences. For the most part, you can ignore My Rig and Shield, but start heading into Preferences and clicking on Games. So now that you're in here, you can add locations of your games if you've got a separate drive for them, as I have. And for most users who don't have another drive just for their games, you won't need to change anything. Now scroll up and make sure you click on Check Now, and it should tell you how many games are supported, and it'll automatically add them to the library. This basically means that these games that you've installed can use Shadowplay. Now click on the Games tab and ta-da, you should see all your games loaded on. You can also head into the Drives tab and make sure everything is up to date, but since you've just recently installed it, that doesn't matter too much. So now with preparation out of the way, you can go into Preferences again and click on Shadowplay. Here you'll find the screen in which you can change key toggles, location of the recording indicator, and your saving location. So in terms of overlays, if you want a camera, simply click on the side you want it to be, and the size. For me, I have my status indicator on the top left to tell me whether I'm recording, and my FPS counter on the top right. These won't show up in your recorded files though. The microphone can be set to either always on or push to talk, or you can press a hotkey to turn it on or off. Keyboard shortcuts I do leave alone, since they're pretty easy to remember and out of the way. Whereas the last bit is just where you want to save your gameplay. So hopefully by now you've configured your preferences to what you want. So if you look in the top right, there'll be a little shadow play icon with the camera next to it. When pressed, it should bring up another tab like this. I'm just going to go over it from left to right starting now. The switch on the far left is simply an on and off switch. As for mode, you have a few options. You can either record in manual, which is start and stop, so you press a key and it'll start, and you press it again and it'll stop, or you can select my favourite part of the software, which is the shadow mode. Imagine it to be like the Elgato's flashback recording, but it's time based. So you can record up to 20 minutes of gameplay. I basically use it in a way so that I don't have to record always and just hit a key once and I get a good match or so. After shadow mode, you've got the shadow and manual, which is a combination of the two, which is what I use, and yet you do have separate hotkeys for each. And lastly, you can stream directly to Twitch, though I think these features in this software is a bit limited, so I'd rather go with something like OBS over it. But just to record, shadow and manual mode is probably your best bet. It really is just as it sounds. It's as if you leave a shadow behind you that is made out of gameplay footage. The footage is then deleted after the shadow is gone, and if you did have shadow mode enabled, you can select the duration that records your gameplay. This is what shadow time is, it basically lets you choose how long the shadow lasts. Now if we take a look at quality, you can select what preset you want to go with, or do what I do and that is just click on custom. In resolution you can set it to whatever you want, I like to do 1080p, which is for the norm I guess. Even though if you want to, you can play 1080p games and get good frame rate with that, but still record at 1440p or 4k, which is a good option. Frame rate, you can either set it to 30 FPS or 60 FPS. Just click on 60 though, it makes the gameplay look that much more fluid since you're basically doubling the frames you can see a second. And now for bitrate. In simple terms, the higher the bitrate, the better the quality. I set mine to 50 megabytes per second, though you should still get really good quality at 40. I personally wouldn't go below 25 though. I just want to say the obvious here, and that's if you have a higher resolution, the file size increases. As you increase the frame rate, so does the file size, and the higher the bitrate, the larger the file size. In general, you shouldn't have a decrease in performance since it is running on the H.264 encoder, but just something to bear in mind if you don't have a large hard drive. Also, audio is quite self-explanatory, so I won't really go over that, but since I don't use a mic for live comms, I've set mine to in-game. Now that I've launched the game, in this case Battlefield, you should see an indicator on the top left, and the FPS indicator on the top right, which is what we've configured in the preferences. Now if you don't see the status indicator, you should set your screen mode to full screen in your gaming settings, and now you should see it. If you click on manual record, in the top left corner you should have a green circle in the centre, which means it's recording manually. Unfortunately I can't show you it since OBS just crashes, which is what I'm using right now to record my screen, whereas if you have the shadow mode hotkey, you'll just see an arrow within it. So that's it guys, hope you have enjoyed this video helped you out in some way. If it did, why not leave a like, and if it didn't, you guys know what to do. 
If you do want to enter my 1000 sub giveaway, you only have less than a week left. Anyway, this has been Proto. Adios.